We'll follow up some details at the end. Also, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. So if you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the question and answer panel where our wonderful panelists are ready to respond. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and welcome Casey. Casey, over to you. All right, thank you, Carlo, and hello, everybody. Uh, let me go ahead and share my, uh, my screen so I can roll through the slide deck here. All right, so as Carlo mentioned, we're going to be, this is a campus webinar on advanced integrations using Cisco DNA Center. We're going to cover three different integrations today. Uh, my name is Casey Hamilton, Solutions Architect with Enterprise Networking at Cisco. So today you will learn the benefits of various integrations with Cisco DNA Center. You'll understand the prerequisites and dependencies for each of the integrations. And then you'll see a live demonstration on the workflow required to set up the integrations with Cisco DNA Center. And Carlo, here's our first poll. If you want to go ahead and uh, announce the poll and initiate the poll so that people can select their answers. Sure thing. So let me get that opened up right now. So today we'll be using Slido. Go ahead and open up our first poll. So our first poll is, what is your current comfort level with Cisco DNA? Your options are very, somewhat, and not at all. Uh, we do encourage you to take the time to participate as this helps us out. Thank you very much. Back to you, Casey. Thank you, Carlo. All right, uh, so today's discussion, the specific integrations I wanna cover with you today is integrating IPAM, uh, so IP Address Manager, integrating Secure Network Analytics. This is formerly known as StealthWatch. Um, the name has changed recently, so now it's referred to as Secure Network Analytics. And then integrating Umbrella, I'll go into each of these three, what they do, what they accomplish, the prerequisites required, uh, config, uh, integration dependencies, and then we'll see a live workflow of how to actually perform the integration. So first, let's start with integrating IPAM. In this section, uh, we'll discuss why integrate IPAM with Cisco DNA Center, um, integration prerequisites, pre-integration with IPAM, and then integrating IPAM with Cisco DNA Center. So why integrate IPAM? So today, um, there's a lot of IP addresses, a lot of IP pools constantly expanding and with thousands of devices joining the network, some employees may have you know, two to three, maybe even four or five devices they're working with at a given time. It's, it can be a lot of IP addresses to manage and what IPAM and the integration with Cisco DNA Center allows you to do is to have it to where if you were, say, configuring an IP address in Cisco DNA Center, that IP address will automatically be sent, the IP pool. So say I do like a 192.168.0.0 segment, that pool will be sent automatically over to IPAM, and then IPAM is going to keep track of the utilization uh, within that IP address pool. So it makes management a lot easier with the ever expanding number of devices. So let's move into specifically how that would look. Without integrating IPAM, Cisco DNA Center, there's a multi-stop configuration here. So some common solutions for IPAM are Infoblox and BlueCat. And then you, we can see the communication workflow in between and that there is no communication working between the two. So by adding IPAM, what we can do with Cisco DNA Center is uh, DNA Center would say, you know, I, I've created an IP pool called Wired Clients. Let's say it has a slash 24 subnet. It needs you to add it to your IP pool configurations. Uh, it, it automatically sends it over to Infoblox. Infoblox then adds it to its configuration and Uh, sorry, um, Carla, are you still seeing the cover slide or do you, are you, does it look no. good on your end? I just got a message saying someone was still seeing the cover slide, so I wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, we're good. I, I see you moving the red pointer. Um, you're on the okay. Y-Integrate IPAM. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, 
So yeah, so let's say we configure a wired client with IP pool configuration on Cisco DNA Center. That IP pool would automatically be sent over to the configuration of info blocks. That way you don't have to log into multiple multiple machines. It's It saves a lot of time as IP addresses get added or removed on info blocks and allows you, the, you the, administrator, the administrator to focus on what's important. So you, you can focus on a single pane of glass within Cisco DNA Center. And then when wired and uh, endpoints, wireless endpoints users are Logging into the network, they need to obtain an IP address. They can get that safely with InfoBlock. And by doing so, it also allows for a really good setup if you plan to perform SD access. Uh, IP address pools for overlay networks are, um, are going to be very beneficial for you. And then also LAN automation deploying network devices at the underlay with LAN automation is another reason to utilize IP pools with Cisco DNA Center. So overall, performing the integration makes it a lot easier to use. Um, some integration prerequisites to make note of, if you're using InfoBlox for IPAM, it must be installed and on either version in, in iOS 6.8 or 8.1 plus. 8.1 plus is recommended. If using BlueCat for IPAM, it must be installed on version 8.2 plus. Verify there is layer three reachability between Cisco DNA Center and IPAM. Verify port 443 TCP is open between Cisco DNA Center and IPAM. Uh, IPAM FQDN is DNS resolvable. This is optional, but best practice. Uh, you can use an IP address for this. Just make sure that you have a HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the IP address. We'll see this in action in the demo, so it'll become more clear here. Next, I uh, have a Cisco DNA Center admin login credentials. Uh, this is so that you can log into Cisco DNA Center and perform the configuration. And then have IPAM admin login credentials or user with correct permissions that will utilize, be utilized for the integration. So, and that is for Cisco DNA Center to log into IPAM over port 443 and perform the integration and synchronize with it. So, Uh, let's go ahead and look at a demo. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my demo environment and let's perform the integration. So uh, over here, I'm going to go to IPAM first. This is InfoBlox. Uh, keep in mind, as I said, there's other vendors available for IPAM. I'm going to show you a demonstration on InfoBlox, but there's BlueCat and there's other vendors you, you can use as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to Data Management. We have to reload it. And uh, just wanted to show you that there currently is no IP pools configured on IPAM. So this is pre-integration. Um, next, I'm going to go over to Cisco DNA Center and perform the integration. So to do that, what you do is you go to system. And before I do that, let me just show you the version we're running on DNA Center. 2.3.4. So I'll go ahead and X out of that. And then I'll go to system. Settings. And type in IP address manager, locate that. And next we see the server name, server URL, username, password provider, and view. While you enter in this information, Cisco DNA Center is sending checks over to InfoBlox to make sure things work. Things such as certificates, uh, it'll check to make sure that is correct. Uh, uh, the attributes within the certificates are correct, and then it'll start performing the integration as you do this. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in the information one second here. All right. Uh, and I'm going to put in infoblocks.dcloud.com. Here's where you can put a FQDN. But if you have an IP address, just make sure to do HTTPS forward slash forward slash 198.18.133.103. Next, uh, and if you're doing this for the first time, Cisco DNA Center needs to add a, a certificate to its trust pool. Uh, what happened here is DNA Center 
uh, tried to hit the HTTPS address and think of it kind of like you're, you know, you're going to an insecure website and wants you to trust uh, uh, or a certificate that it doesn't trust and you need to accept that certificate. It's like a security warning. This is very similar to that. So all you have to do is click that little red triangle icon right here. And then it'll give you the certificate information, similar to how it does on a web browser. I'll go ahead and accept this. Allow Cisco DNA Center to access this IP address on an untrusted certificate to the trust pool. Click Allow. Go to Admin. Enter in the login credentials. See you on. All right. And then we go to. Infoblox, because that's what we're using. You have Blue Cat and you have generic as well. Um, if you're using a different IPAM device other than Infoblox or Blue Cat, make sure to pick generic. And then finally, we have our view. If at any time you, uh, you receive warnings here, they may come up. Say, like, uh, mostly I've seen them for certificate issues uh, that'll come up here. Maybe some attributes, a common name, and a certificate isn't correct. Uh, make sure to, it'll warn you as you go through. But I'm going to go ahead and click Save. The integration should be successful. Let's see here. All right. So there we go. Integration successful. I'm going to go to so System 360. I'm going to show you how to get to that. So System, System 360. Uh, and then we can see the IP address is available. The, the IPAM server is available right here. Um, uh, one thing I do want to call out, I want to go to IP pools real quick. Design, network hierarchy, actually network settings, IP address pools. All right, import. Import from IPAM server. All right, so before I do that, let me refresh this page. And we can see the IP pools that were right here, configured under global, are now visible. We can see 10.100.0.0 in DNA Center, 10.100.0.0 in IPM, as well as the other two global IP pools. One will be used, you can see this is very specific for SDA. Uh, one will be used for LAN auto automation, other IP overlay, the other one IP underlay. Uh, one thing to keep in mind before the integration, if you have IP pools like these, if I were to delete the integration and perform the integration now, what will happen is DNA Center is going to tell IPAM that it needs to add these pools over to it, but IPAM is going to detect that it already has the pools, and this is going to cause an integration error. Something to keep in mind, the quickest way to if you are doing the integration and you already have IP pools that you're going to add into the Cisco DNA Center, the quickest way to resolve this is export it. So you click here, you export the IP pools from here in a CSV file, and then you delete the pools, you import from IPM server or import from CSV file. This is pre-integration. Import from CSV file and put them in here. Then perform the integration, then they'll automatically get synced over to IPM. Um, but yeah, that is it for the demo with IPAM. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to our PowerPoint deck. All right, and Carlo, if you want to go ahead and take poll number two. Awesome, thank you very much. All right, let me go ahead and open up poll number two. For this, we ask, which IPAM system do you use or are planning to use in the future? Your choices are InfoBlox, BlueCat, or other. Again, your feedback is important, so we do plan to participate. This poll will be open for about two minutes. Uh, back to you, Casey. Thank you, Carlo. Uh, next, I want to cover integrating secure network analytics, formerly known as StealthWatch. So let's discuss why would you want to integrate it with DNA Center and the integration prerequisites, and also a live demo on the integration. So why integrate secure network analytics? We have uh, integration. Uh, so we have over here, we have secure network analytics right here. And we have communication similar to IPAM between Cisco DNA Center 
and um, the secure network analytics. So integration is enabled and detects SSA flow collectors. When we'll see what that means in further detail in the demo, but Cisco DNA Center will integrate here and it's going to detect another uh, a device called a flow collector that's configured on secure network analytics. And what that flow collector does is it's a separate device that receives information from network devices. So let's say uh, I'm a client generating network tra traffic. So I'm uh, I'm I'm going to a website. I'm sending emails. As the traffic traverses uh, the uh, security network analytics upon, uh, and network devices, it's going to be simultaneously exported to secure network analytics for real time monitoring. So how this would look is the client hits say a router. The router will forward it to the flow collector while the uh, information is also getting through to the network. Secure network analytics is going to detect the data presented uh, for further analysis as well. Um, and the real magic that Cisco DNA Center performs here is it makes it easy to provision secure network analytics on your network devices. So you may have thousands of network devices within Cisco DNA Center. What this is going to do is allow you seamless control of which devices based on network location and are and role are configured for secure network analytics. So Cisco DNA DNA Center checks the, for the ready, readiness of network devices. If de devices are ready, it pushes configuration to the network devices to enable SSA. I'm going to go into what it means by ready here in a bit. So let's go into the prerequisites. Secure network analytics enterprise running 7.0 or greater is required for Cisco DNA Center integration. At least one flow collector exists within the secure network analytics deployment. Secure network analytics security analytics package is installed on Cisco DNA Center. That's found under uh, where you can upgrade Cisco DNA Center. I'll show you that in a second. Cisco DNA Center has reachability to secure network analytics console, the SMC. Username and password of Cisco Network Analy uh, of Secure Network Analytics. Username and password of Cisco DNA Center. At least one compatible device is in the network inventory for Cisco DNA Center and assigned to a site. And then lastly, a thing to consider here in bar or otherwise referred to as application telemetry cannot be enabled on a switch that will be configured with Secure Network Analytics due to the flow collector configuration conflicts. So what this means is you have a choice between using secure network analytics or you have a choice between using application telemetry for assurance. Uh, the reason being is it's going to currently how, how the behavior works is it configures one or the other. Otherwise, there's going to be configuration conflicts between the two. So something to keep in mind as you look into deployment of secure network analytics or application telemetry. Here at the bottom, we can see uh, uh, the checks the DNA center will perform on a device prior to deploying the SSA configuration over to it. And here we can see the integration prerequisites for software version and licensing required. Uh, here's our different product families. You can see up here on the top, we have our legend encrypted traffic analysis versus flexible net flow. Um, the, what this does is that it uh, by having flexible net flow, it enables the uh, you know legacy devices, so 9850s, 3650s. And what that'll do is it'll essentially transition it over to encrypted traffic analysis where it can perform traffic inspection on encrypted devices within the um, the communication flow of the data that's being presented to SSA. And uh, we can see that primarily the iOS XE version is 16.9.1 for the minimum version. Um, for routers, the only difference is when I look at um, the 4,000 ISRs and the 1,000 ASRs, we have 16.6.4. DNAC advantage uh, is required for them, or if you are only working with routers on this, you can do K9s as well. Now, one thing to one kind of like workaround. I know I mentioned the application telemetry earlier, and 
and you know how there's a conflict there with having secure network analytics running at the same time. You could here's a some somewhat of an option you could use. You you could say have it running on a router, secure network analytics, or secure secure network analytics on a switch while the router performs the application telemetry. If you want the best of both worlds, uh, that could be an option as well. So something to consider there. Uh, integration prerequisites for roles. So this is the, say I'm logging into Cisco DNA Center and I want to perform the integration. This is the function that it accomplishes. So uh, all of these functions are required for the integration. Uh, what you do is you drill to system users and roles, create a new role. Uh, that being said, you can perform this with super admin role, but if you do have another role, uh, these are the permissions that are required for it. And then let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So I'm going to pull that up. And I'm going to just show you a couple things. First, I'm going to get a uh, the users and roles I just mentioned, uh, this is where you'd actually do it, role-based access control, uh, and then you click add role, let's do it, and then you get the role a name, and then you would go through the basic settings that I just listed out, and the integration should be successful at that point. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is go to show you where you can do that software application package upgrade. So you go to system. And then uh, let's see where are we at software management. And stealth watch security analytics right here. So one thing to keep in note, it is secure network analytics now, but Cisco DNA Center is still using the word StealthWatch. I can see that changing here in the foreseeable future. Um, right now, it's at 2.1.560. Let's go ahead and perform the integration. So I'm going to go to System, Settings. And before I actually perform this integration, I'm going to go over to StealthWatch. So here's StealthWatch. I might need to refresh the page. No, it's good. Click Configure. I'm going to go to Exporters. This is StealthWatch. Uh, one thing I want to show you is that there are no network devices in here. Once you deploy uh, StealthWatch configuration to network devices, they will show up here. So this is where you can find them. Cisco DNA Center will log in and add those over while pushing the configuration over to the network devices. So one stop for three different uh, devices that need the actual configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to uh, here and do the integration. So I'm going to enter SelfWatch's IP address, 198.18.35.13.0. You can see here it's asking for still for me to trust a certificate. So I'll click allow here, same as like I did in IPAM. And click save. All right, integration was successful. I'm gonna go back to system, system 360. You'll notice here the dashlet doesn't show up immediately. Um, like IPAM did. Uh, I believe the reason for that is IPAM is one of the more common integrations. But if I go to Edit Actions, Edit Dashboard, and then click Add Dashlet, we'll see StealthWatch right here and click Add. Now we can see StealthWatch is available. So put that right there. Uh, next thing to do, we'll go to Design, Network Settings. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't forget to click Save. <laughs> so click OK. Design network settings. All right. You can also see here that StealthWatch is not showing. This is where it'll be configured under network. If I click add servers and click StealthWatch low destination, click OK. 
what that'll do is, is it's going to create, give me a self watch and it'll allow me to select the flow destination. The flow destination is what we saw earlier in the slide deck. It is the actual collector of stealth watch. If I actually, what what will happen? So this is stealth watch right here, and this is a different device called the flow collector. The flow collector will collect data from the network devices and send it over to stealth watch. So different IP addresses. One three seven is the IP address of the flow collector. And you can see the DNAC automatically detected that over, and it's going to use the flow collector over 2055. So we can expect this to be configured on those no network devices here in just a second once we deploy the network, deploy it to the network devices. I'm going to go ahead and click save and then go to provision inventory. And now we see our network devices here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and deploy it to the Fusion. One thing to call out as well, we saw it in the slide deck. This is only supported for wired devices currently, so wired um, switches currently. But um, what will happen is wireless devices will connect to the network, and they it, the, the data is still running over the wired network when it is wireless so that can be achieved as well so fusion i'm going to go ahead and click the fusion actually go to provision inventory uh, what you'll do is you'll go to stealth watch security analytics right here and it sees that there's one capable de device go ahead and click let's get started we have our shared services D cloud device so um, it shows it's ready. If you needed to exclude any devices, you could, if it was showing like more than one device here. Um, encrypted traffic analysis as default, so ETA telemetry. This is what we uh, talked about er earlier, earlier when we have ETA or flexible NetFlow. Where flexible NetFlow, that FNF stands for flexible NetFlow. What it refers to is a method for legacy devices to achieve encrypted traffic analysis. So this is where you would enable that at. I would recommend doing that so that Stealthwatch has full visibility and then click enable. You are all set. Deployment is scheduled. Actually, started next. Okay, there we go. So it refresh, uh, and now you can see capable devices, enabled devices is one, cable devices is one. So, yeah, looks like it deployed successfully. Let's go ahead and validate that, make sure it deployed the Stealthwatch config. So I'm, I'm going to go over to inventory. Remember, we deployed it over to the shared services network device. So I'm going to click that. Go to view device details. And go to config drift. So let's see what we have here. Uh, let's see what config has changed. Uh, I'm going to actually change the date right here to the 15th. Flow exporter. It may take a little bit to update. Oh. Yeah. It'll, this looks like the discovery configuration. Let me see. Okay. Well, I'm going to log into the switch then, because it should have been pushed over to that. Oh yeah, there we are. So flow monitor, ETA mon, IP flow 
export a destination. Here's our flow collector that we identified in the network settings over port 2055. Um, next thing, I also want to show you the interface. It pushes the configuration. It pushes to the, let's say, the access ports on the devices. It doesn't push it to trunk ports. It only pushes it to the access ports. So let's see, show VLAN brief, let's see what interfaces we have at access. So we have show run at G101. And we can see ET analytics is enabled. So this is part of the StealthWatch configuration as well. And now StealthWatch is deployed to the network device. If I go back over here, you can see that 172.16.11.2 was added. And we can see here 11.2 is the network device. So three stop, uh, three stops. Oh, actually, we made one stop in DNA Center, and it performed the rest of the configuration down to StealthWatch and the network device. So that is StealthWatch. Now I'm going to cover the last integration, which is Umbrella. So let me go ahead and bring my PowerPoint back up. All right. So why integrate Umbrella with Cisco DNA Center? Integration prerequisites, and then integrating Umbrella with Cisco DNA Center. Why integrate Umbrella? Here, uh, what Umbrella is, let me start off with that. Uh, Umbrella, it is a way to monitor DNS queries to make sure that they're not malicious. Um, and uh, um, what um, DNA Center does, what it allows it to do is to get devices. It's very similar to the Stealthwatch integration. It'll allow you to get device um, uh, wired and wireless devices configured with swiftness and speed. That way, those network devices can also communicate with Umbrella about the DNS traffic flowing through the network. So it communicates at the DNS layer. And then Umbrella will have policies configured on here. Umbrella will um, be able to block certain DNS requests. You'll be able to configure policies on Umbrella. Um, Cisco DNA Center is only in charge of the configuration of the network devices. That said, it does also have some assurance data that it can give you and give you information on, you know, which uh, the number of DNS entries that were blocked and on what device those were blocked on. But its primary function is to send the configuration over to these devices and onboard them automatically into Umbrella. So it, it's a one stop for three different locations, three different types of devices. So let's look at the flow. Cisco DNA Center obtains policies created on Umbrella. Um, the device registers with Umbrella. Uh, Cisco DNA Center checks for the device readiness. Um, if device is ready, it pushes policies to them at a per SSID interface level. Um, and then the device registers with Umbrella. Client sends and receives DNS queries over to the network devices. The device sends the query, the network device sends the query to Umbrella. The query is run against the policies. If permitted, the query is resolved. If denied, the DNS query is blocked. Uh, the device sends allowed blocked query data to assurance. We'll see that in action in just a second. So here's a breakdown of the communication again. We can see Cisco DNA Center settings are configured. Cisco DNA Center registers with Umbrella, gets the policies and domains. Uh, by, no, by domains, what that means is that Cisco DNA Center is going to get the trusted domain. So if you have, for instance, domain bypasses uh, where you, you have domains in your organization that you know need to be resolved, um, DNA Center will be aware of those. and um, configure those policies accordingly on the network devices. So it's a very good way to manage those policies specifically on the network devices. Then Cisco DNA Center will provision Umbrella on network devices. Uh, the device registers with Umbrella with its registration and then it receives a device ID. Then the client sends and receives DNS queries. DNS queries sent uh, DNS query encrypted DNS over to Umbrella and then we get a DNS response 
back to the client if it passes or if it doesn't pass it's going to get a um, a block as well so let's go ahead and go into the integration prerequisites umbrella integration with cisco dna center cisco dna center is uh, must be at 2.1.x or higher with advantage license and cisco umbrella package needs to be installed 2.1x.1.x .1 only supports WLC, WLCs. 2.2.2 and greater supports WLCs, Catalyst 9200, and Catalyst 9300. So if you're planning on running wired, make sure to get upgraded to at least 2.2.2. Umbrella account with org ID is required, management API key secret, network device API key secret, and device legacy token. All of these are required. We'll see each of these in action when we perform the integration. Policies and internal domains to, to, to are greater configured on Umbrella. So um, this you'll want to do for post or after the integration, and it'll send it over to Cisco DNA Center, update the policies. Reachability between Cisco DNA Center and Umbrella, and Cisco Umbrella root certificate is available on Cisco DNA Center Trust Pool. That, it's basically similar to what we had going on with IPAM and Southwatch when we trusted the certificate. So there's also provisioning requirements for the network devices. Network devices are running 16.12.x or higher. Network devices are provisioned and assigned to a site. If WLC makes your SSID configuration is non-fabric, uh, ensure umbrella configuration is wiped on network devices prior to to deploying it with Cisco DNA Center and their device reachability to Cisco DNA Center and Cisco Umbrella. Integration prerequisites. Here we have our read write rules uh, for configuring the integration with DNA Center and Umbrella. So you can review that here. And now we have our integration. So I'm going to pull the lab back up. And we can see Umbrella over here. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay. So I'll give you a brief little tour of Umbrella. So um, here is our policies. We can configure the policies here, DNS policies. Currently, we have our default policy and uh, Cisco DNA Center policy. There's a policy I uh, created uh, as well here. You can get into the specifics about the policy. Do you, uh, do you want SSL decryption? Uh, you know, a bunch of different settings that are out of scope for this, but this is where you would configure it. So if, if you get Umbrella or if you already have Umbrella, this is where you'll find it to configure the policies. Uh, now, now that I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to DNA Center. The one thing I want to call out is the um, org ID. So I mentioned earlier you need an org ID. You can find that in the URL here. This is the org ID. So I'm going to copy this. Copy. I'll need that for the integration. So I'm going to go back to DNA Center, System, Settings, go to Umbrella. Paste the org ID in. And now you can see the rest of the stuff we need. We need network device API keys and secrets, management API keys and secrets, and legacy device registration token. I'm going to go back over to Umbrella, go to admin API keys. And I'm going to go ahead and generate some API keys. So Umbrella network devices generate token. Copy that. Uh, one, one thing to keep in mind, secret, the secret key. It's only viewable once. So make sure this is documented or and also in a very safe location. Um, if you do need to refresh or generate another secret, you can click refresh right here. Um, so I'm going to copy the key for the umbrella network devices. 
network device API key, paste that right in here. Next, I'm going to copy the secret. Network device secret, put that right there. Next, we have our umbrella management, which can be found right here. I'm going to go ahead and generate token. Copy that. Copy the secret, put it in there. And lastly, for legacy network devices, go ahead and click that, copy, and paste it in here. Now we have all the information required for the integration. And click Save. And settings have been updated. So I'm going to go back to System, System 360, like StealthWatch, Secure Network Analytics. The umbrella is not showing either. So simple way to do that is just like we did with StealthWatch. Go ahead and click Edit, Add Dashlet, Umbrella Dashlet and then click add. And you can see your org ID here and that umbrella is available. All right. So next, what I'll do is I'm going to go to the umbrella deployment. So to do that, we get a provision, umbrella. Oh, yeah. Remember to save. Um, all right, go to provision, umbrella. And then we have our total number of DNS queries and blocked umbrella DNS queries. So this is that ass assurance section I was talking about. Uh, you get a general baseline uh, or idea of how your uh, DNS queries are, are operating within your network. Any kind of like security blocks, content blocks, um, this could flag some stuff that you may want to look into on umbrella itself. Um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and enable a device. So we have the option here to enable a wireless controller or a switch. Uh, I'm going to show you the wireless. I'm going to show you both actually, but I'm going to show you the deployment of the wireless controller. Let me first, uh, I'm going to go ahead and disable it so I can show you the full deployment one second. There we go. So it's disabling. While that's disabling, I'm going to show you let me get back over there to Umbrella. I'm going to show you the network devices, the wired network devices. So we can see that two are ready. It performed the checks, two are ready. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click both. Next. We have our fusion devices. And essentially what we're doing here is we're letting Cisco DNA Center know about the inbound and outbound interfaces. So in uh, outbound ports, meaning most likely, um, you know, going to the WAN side of things, outbound WAN, inbound LAN for access. So what I can do, a simple way to kind of like mark these uh, and always validate, make sure the interfaces are aligned correctly. So I'm gonna mark all as LAN. And then what I can do, because most likely, most of my interfaces are going to be LAN interfaces, but then I may have a few WAN interfaces, most likely two or more. Um, so define umbrella interfaces, I can click some, and then I can go ahead and select that, click save, and now highlight in yellow is WAN interfaces. I can go ahead and define the WAN interface for this one as well, and click save. Uh, same thing for here. Mark all is LAN. Okay. And go ahead. So how this is going to work is network device traffic is going to go in to these LAN interfaces. The flow monitor um, uh, or umbrella is going to collect, uh, the network device is going to send data over to umbrella. Umbrella is going to validate the policies and um, decide whether to allow the DNS request or block it. If it gets permitted, and while this is happening, um, 
it, it, the traffic can divert, traverse over to other LAN interfaces or the WAN interface. And then most likely, the network devices are going to send data over to Cisco DNA Center about the operations of specific DNS requests over the LAN, uh, the WAN interface. I'm going to go ahead and click Next here. Here we can decide which policies to select. Click Next, and then Review Internal Domains. Uh, what these are, these are areas where you could do like, for instance, we have dcloud.cisco.com. Um, and the reason for that is we know this is a domain that could be bypassed. Cisco.com, we trust this domain. It's an internal domain. We don't need to um, check for it. It's basically a local domain bypass and can save resources and time when resolving a request. Uh, lastly, do you like to, uh, to enable DNS packet encryption? So you can click yes, I'd like to encrypt uh, traffic, and then click deploy. I'm going to show you the deployment on the um, wireless controller. Let me go back to umbrella. But you can see the wireless controller changed to ready. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Umbrella status, click next. And here we can select our different policies. So we saw on umbrella that I can Cisco DNA Center policy. I'm going to go ahead and select that. You can select multiple. Um, I'm going to select that one. So DNA Center is getting the policies from Umbrella. And what we're saying here is we're about to push it to the network device so that it can enforce those policies. I'm going to click Next. Similar to the wired devices, you have your local domain bypass. Do I want to enable DNS packet encryption? Yes. Click Next and gives you a summary of the policies. DNS script is pushed. Go ahead and click Deploy, Apply. And it'll take just a second, so then progress. So it looks like it's configuring it right now. May just take just a second here. It's also configuring Umbrella Cloud, as you can see. And it looks like both were a success, so I'll go ahead and X out of here. I'm going to try and show you that config drift again. So provision, inventory, 9800, new device details. Config drift. Yeah, sometimes it takes just a few minutes for this to populate on config drift. I believe it's like every five minutes it'll populate. Um, but it's a really good tool for determining, you know, what configuration has been removed or not. Um, right now, I don't see any of the umbrella configuration. But if I pull up, let's say, you know, the wireless controller.
So we can see DNS crypt was enabled. That gives a pretty clear indication that umbrella uh, configuration was deployed to the network devices. Let me see if that's pulling up here. Oh, it may take a little bit. So here we can see that uh, token was pushed for Umbrella. We can see the actual integration was deployed. Um, and then uh, we can see, let's see, DNS crypt was enabled. Uh, we have our certificates for Umbrella. So that looks good to go. I'm going to try one more time. If this doesn't work, I'm going to go back over to the slide deck and we'll finish up here because I know we're getting short on time. It may take just a little bit longer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the slide deck. Um, there we go. All right, so let's finish up with some key points to remember. By integrating IPAM with Cisco DNA Center, you significantly decrease operational expenditure, excuse me, while ensuring consistency across the enterprise. If using InfoBlox, you must have version 6.1 or 8.1 plus installed. 8.1 plus is recommended. If using BlueCat, you must have 8.2 plus. Uh, secure network analytics, formerly known as StealthWatch, significantly increases network visibility by monitoring data, tra data traffic of endpoints and users. By integrating secure network analytics with Cisco DNA Center, you enable quick provisioning and ease of management for network devices that will be monitoring data traffic. By integrating Cisco DNA Center with Cisco Umbrella, you enable fast and agile deployment monitoring for network security at the DNS layer. This includes resolving DNS queries, application control, and file analysis. For Umbrella Cisco DNA Center 2.1.x only supports WLCs, 2.2.2 and greater supports WLCs, 9200s, and 9300s. And uh, Carla, I'll go ahead and uh, hand the rest off to you. Well, thank you very much. Let me go ahead and put some information in the chat. But at this time, we'll go ahead and take some questions from the audience. Uh, so if you have a question, please use the Q&A panel. I did get one question a bit earlier, and uh, they were wondering, uh, one of the audience members was wondering, what version of the DNAC are you using, Casey, for the demos? Two dot, yeah, 2.3.4 currently. Um, but most of those integrations, I would say will work on versions that are lower with the exception being umbrella um make sure to be at least 2.1.1 for that awesome next question i have here is when trying to integrate ipam i get a certificate error saying uh, the remote server presented a certificate with an incorrect cn of the owner how can i fix this so this Issue typically occurs if you're using like an IP address for the, you know, like an IPAM server URL in Cisco DNA Center. So that certificate we worked on earlier, if you're using an IP address, simply add it to the SAN field when generating a certificate in IPAM or wherever you're gener generating that certificate from. So if you're using an IP address, go ahead and in the SAN field, 
re-enter the IP address in there. And that's a quick workaround to make sure the integration works if you're getting that kind of error. Awesome, thank you. All right, next question is, can I have an IP address or can I have IP address pools in Cisco DNA Center that already exist in IPAM prior to the integration? No, this will cause duplicate entries. So as we mentioned earlier, the best way to avoid this is by using a CS file to export it from IPAM, export the IP pools that are existing in the configuration of IPAM, and then import it into Cisco DNA Center, delete the IP pools in IPAM, perform the integration, and then the IP pools will automatically get synced over to uh, Cisco DNA Center, uh, over to IPAM, sorry. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Next question I have here is, does Secure Network Analytics integration with Cisco DNA Center work with wireless devices? You know, currently the integration only supports the routers and switches outlined earlier in the presentation. Um, we had the table where we showed uh, the various versions and licensing requirements and only routers and switches are currently supported for the Secure Network Center integration. Awesome. Uh, next question is, do I need to use all tokens and secrets listed in Cisco Umbrella for the integration to be successful? Uh, yes, all tokens and secrets are required for a successful integration with Umbrella. Thank you. And then I do see one last question. Um, is there a list of generic IPAMs that we can consult um, in if any of the panelists would like to chime in, they can do so as well by unmuting the microphone. Yeah, I, I, I let me look around for a list. We have a community post session webinar to an A, and I'll be sure to post the link in there for an official document. Um, I know I've, I've seen areas where, you know, Solar Winds and Active Directory have been working with IPAM. So I know those uh, will most likely work, but let me get an official list for you and I will send it in the post-session webinar Q&A as well. Thank you. Uh, I think we're all set with the Q, uh, the questions. You've uh, answered everything that was on there. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say, Casey, before we start to wrap up? Well, thank you everyone for joining. I hope this was informative for you and that uh, you got a lot of value out of it. And I hope you choose to, you know, uh, proceed with one of these integrations for Cisco DNA Center and that it adds a lot of value to your company and your operations and have a great holidays everyone thank you for joining